Meet you all. What, uh, what was that you're going on? I was teaching them the new Faith Flight School theme. Ah, sounds oh, great. Thank yeah. you. And I see you've tried on the new yes, uniforms. Yes, they look yeah. great. Yeah, I really like them. Yeah. I like it's the bright really color on your knees. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you get to roll up the sleeves. Oh, yeah. What are you guys gonna well, do with that? Wear funky socks. Yeah. 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 Cool socks. Yeah. Cool socks. That'd be yeah. awesome. Oh, yeah. hey, how's the hangar going? Oh, it's great. They're working on enlarging it right now. <laughs> so exciting. Oh, awesome. yeah. It's so nice that we can take the stage we have now and take it to the hangar. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We'll just add a few more props, dress it up a little bit, oh, but yeah. get it transferred over. So good. You good guys will be ready to go. And it's really nice that we get to use the chapel for worship also. I mean, they're doing that today, right? Yes. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was headed there right now. Oh, awesome. Oh, nice. nice. Boys and girls, you ready for worship? Let's go. Okay, so play it again. So like this, on the seventh fret.
song. Hallelujah. You guys ready to live by faith? Yeah, I think you are. You guys remember your letters? You guys help us keep the, keep the rhythm a little bit here. Yep, keep it going. Keep that energy. F-A-I-T-H I live by 
Thank you, Lord. I want everyone in this place to lift up your hands. Remember what I said, that if you if we give yourself to these lessons and allow him to enlarge your heart and fill you up with his love, you will grow. You will grow. And you'll know the difference when you worship him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. I really like offering. Can you tell? And you should like offering too. Now, to, speaking of offering, do you guys remember how in the last offering we talked about how we had to prosper on the inside before we could prosper on the outside? And then 
In the lesson, we talked about a very specific person who did just that. And his name was Abraham. Abraham had faith in God and what he said and promised him. So that allowed him to prosper on the inside. And by doing that, God was able to prosper him on the outside. Now, I hope you brought your Bibles because we're gonna need them. I've got mine. Do you have yours? Good, I'm glad you have it. We are going to turn to the very first book in the New Testament, which is Matthew. Good job. We're going to read Matthew chapter six, and then you're gonna go all the way to verse 33, where it says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. Did Abraham seek first the kingdom of God? Well, of course he did. He had trust and faith in what God promised him. And because he had faith and trust and he listened to the Lord, he was putting the Lord in the kingdom of God first. And by doing that, God was able to prosper and give to him even more and increase him. And God is always going to be telling us things to do, just like how he told Abraham to leave Ur. And some of those things are going to seem very impossible and difficult to us, but to God, all things are possible. And it's a little thing to him. Now, some of those impossible things may seem really difficult to you or to me, just like how when God told Abraham that he would have as many descendants as there are stars in the sky, Abraham thought that was, might have been impossible. I mean, if you go outside and you count all the stars, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, two, you could count forever. And that's how many descendants he would have, and he was already an older man? That's, that seems pretty impossible, but God did it. Why and how? Because Abraham put him first to receive and accomplish these seemingly impossible things that God has told us to do and has told us that he's going to do for us, we must first seek him and have faith in him. And that kind of relates to our giving too. If we have faith when we give where God told us to, and we sow that seed with a good heart, that is putting the kingdom first and it's increasing us on the inside. And now, since we gave in faith to where God told us to, we reap a harvest and we increase and prosper on the outside so that we can give more, increase on the inside, and reap more and increase on the outside over and over and over and over again until you are rich in the things of God and you are helping spread the gospel because you are doing what the Lord told you to do. Now today, we are going to be learning about two people, Joshua and Caleb. Now I'm not gonna spoil the story because it's a good one, but I do want you to pay extra close attention to Joshua and Caleb's heart and their attitudes and how their heart and their attitude and their faith in God was able to increase them on the inside and then increase them on the outside, and also how the actions of the people around them made it so they couldn't increase at all. Okay now, Tom, what's this area over here? This is an area I'm quite excited about. This will be our science department. Ah, okay. That's where our space room will be, and eventually, Dr. No's office. Oh, I bet he's excited about that. Oh, he will be very excited about it. I hope it's large enough. If it's not, we'll be sure and enlarge it. That's a good plan. And down the hall here, we've got the submarine room. Ah, good location. Great location. Excuse me, um, Tom? Yes, Ms. Dr. Kelsey. No, Dr. No has the footage ready. Wonderful. Tell him I'll be right now. Will do. Captain Tyler, I've got a, something to go look at. I'll see you here in just a little while. Okay, I'll stay here and familiarize myself with these plans. Wonderful. Oh, boys and girls, I'm excited and I'm back. I've been pumping, I've been lifting, 
I'm so worked up on the outside, I'm ready to get enlarged on the inside. Boys and girls, we talked about how being born again means that we are a new creation, a new creation that is able to receive the good things God has for us. It can be enlarged so that God can give us more good things. It's a material that can expand rather than just break under the pressure. Let's look at our scripture one more time. Now, do you remember where the scripture is? That's okay, because I've got it right here. This scripture is Ephesians 3, 14 through 19. <clears throat> For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Boys and girls, our hearts have been made to receive the good things of God. Look at this. When he tells us something and we believe it, our hearts begin to enlarge. It's like exercising. When he tells us something, even though we don't know how it could happen, but we choose to believe it anyway, it causes our hearts to become more open to the things he has for us. Look at how big that's getting. That can receive a lot of good stuff. And that's what our hearts do when we choose to believe what God has for us. Now, there's another scripture I need to reference. It found in Corinthians. And I think you're gonna like it because it talks about enlarging. 2 Corinthians 6, 11 and verse 13. Oh, ye Corinthians, my mouth is open to you and my heart is enlarged. And verse 13 basically says, so you be enlarged. That's what it says. We, we need to believe what God says and we need to have our hearts enlarged so we can re receive the good things. You know what? I think we should go to the information station and have a look at another example from the Bible about having hearts enlarged. Faith Life Kids, welcome to the information station where we gather information for your inspiration. I'm your host, Tom Teller. We've been learning about our hearts being enlarged, how it's necessary if we want to receive all that God has for us. And last time I had someone help me the one and only, Dr. No. Ah, hello again, Tom. Hello again, boys and girls. Dr. No. Yes. Was Thasbury able to go back and get some examples for us? Ah, that he did. In fact, they should be getting processed as we speak. Excellent. You know, last time, Thasbury got some excellent footage on Abraham and how God took him out into the night sky and showed him all the stars. And it was there that we saw who he was able to enlarge his own heart in order to receive what God had promised him. Absolutely amazing. Hmm. Today, we'll be viewing some footage that Thasbury just got. Yes, uh, this time we've sent Thasbury back in time to when the Israelites went to go and claim a land that God had promised them. Now, it says here that we're going to be looking at, ah, the Israelites went out to spy the land mm. that God had promised to them. I spy, hmm, one of my favorite games. Let's play. I spy with my little eye something purple. Um. You'll never guess. Oh, is it your tie? It is. Yes. Dr. No, you are very good at that game. Thank you. Ah, Thasbury has a note here. He says that we're going to watch as two of the 12 spies mm -hmm. bring back a good report and choose to enlarge their hearts. Ooh, mm. I'm excited to see it. It's going to be good. Let's watch it now. Yes, we shall. <clears throat> Computer, 
Yes, Dr. No? Please play the footage. Playing footage. Tell us, what did you find? They're huge! It's tiny as no way we can take it. It's well, we're like, oh, we're like oh, tiny no, grasshoppers. We were there. We're yeah. there. Yeah. Josh, you and I were there. Oh, yeah. yeah. We can do it. We're not no. like grasshoppers. We can take them. We can take them. No. Yeah. No. God no. said that was our land, so let's go. No. Let's go take them. Come on. No. We can take them. No. We can take them. Let's go. Don't you remember everything God has done for us? No. We've seen miracle after miracle after miracle. Don't you think he's gonna do what he says? No. Oh, the, the walls are way too big. They have a giant. Oh, oh, we can do it. We can do it. The walls are too big. It's all over. Just get it. 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 Wow. They were not in agreement. <laughs> but they all went out to scout the same land. Same land, different reports. Mm. Two of them believed God. Ten of them did not. Mm. It's not good. It's really not. No, when you don't believe God, it holds you back from receiving what God has for you. Well, here's the thing. This is what I'm wondering. And I think the children are probably wondering this too. What happens to them? Do they eventually listen to, like Joshua and Caleb did? Sadly, no. They wandered out there in the wilderness, and they died there without receiving the promise. Oh, that's so sad. It is. But there were others that did. The ones that believed God. The ones that were able to enlarge their hearts to receive what God had for them. Of course, Joshua and Caleb. <laughs> exactly. Let's go now and see the rest of the story and see how their hearts were enlarged some more. Ah, yes. <clears throat> Computer, resume footage. Playing footage. We're going in, Caleb! We're going in, Joshua! You see that mountain over there? Oh, yep. That's my mountain. Oh, yeah. And it's gonna be mine. And we get in there, I'm gonna get some more of them giant grapes. Oh, oh those grapes. Oh, so delicious. Delicious. The land flowing with milk and honey. The purest honey. That's what God says. He calls it a good land. And he called it our land. Our land! Yes! Yes! Woo! 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 Dr. No. Yes? Did you notice how they reminded themselves of all that God had said to them? Yes, I did. I noticed that God had promised them a land flowing with milk and honey. And when they looked at those mountains, they were reminded and excited to receive God's promises. Hmm, sounds like a spirit of faith. And did you see the joy that was all over them? <laughs> yes, I did. As we focus on God and what he said to us, instead of choosing to fear and <laughs> to doubt, uh -huh, our heart is enlarged and we're able to receive the fullness of God. Yes, and that's one way to continually enlarge your heart, by staying in that spirit of faith. Mm. You know, not very long after that, Joshua and Caleb, not only did they possess the land, but amazing things happened. Hmm. Do you know about the walls of Jericho? I believe I have. When the time came, God gave them instructions on what to do. Yes, they marched quietly around the city for six days. Ah. They were quiet as a church mass. But on the seventh day, mm. they were to let out a shout. Shout! And as they did, the city walls fell down and they were able to take the land that God had promised them. Yes, they chose to believe God. Or you could say, obey God. Mm. And when they did, their hearts were enlarged. And they took part of the promised land. You know, that was one of many steps, and it didn't stop there. They took it all. Sadly, that was the promise for all of God's children, and only the ones that believed were the ones that enjoyed the promise. Mm. Quite sad. It really is. But if we'll believe God the way Joshua and Caleb did, we'll receive all that God has for us, and our hearts will be enlarged. Yes, and as they were obedient to do exactly as God said, Joshua and Caleb and all the rest of them, those walls came down just <laughs> Bam! They all came a-tumbling down. Their faith and obedience really paid off. That's right. Hmm. And it will work on any problem that you're dealing with, or I'm dealing with. 
God is good. Oh. Even when fear makes it look like there's no way for us to win, when we do, our hearts will be enlarged and That's we'll right. receive all that God has for us. That's right. <laughs> what great examples of enlarging our hearts. Now I think it might be time to get another one. Another one? Another example. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. I have just the assignment in mind. Let's go find Fazbear. <laughs> Whoa! Boys and girls, Joshua and Caleb, pretty cool dudes. That Caleb looks like he could handle some stuff, even though he was kind of old there towards the end. Joshua and Caleb, man, you know what they did? They believed God even when it didn't look very good in the natural. When they went into the promised land to look over everything, they saw the giants. They saw the chariots and the giant walls. In the natural, it didn't look too good, but they didn't believe that. They didn't doubt what God said. They didn't get into fear about what they saw. No, they chose to believe in God and hold to what he told them. And he told them that they could possess the land and they just had to go and get it. It took some time, but by believing what God said, their hearts enlarged, and they were able to receive God's promise for them. They took the land. Caleb got his mountain, and they went in to the promised land. Boys and girls, that's exciting stuff, because we can do the same. We can believe what God tells us. If he says, if we ask him and he says to go to that church or go to this school, or maybe when you grow up, you don't know what kind of job you're gonna have. He might say, do this, and you believe what he says. Your heart will begin to enlarge and you can receive more of what God has for you. And then you can believe that. And as you receive, your hearts just enlarge and get bigger and the fullness of God will overtake you. And it's so exciting. I am so excited about this. Let's keep going about it. Hey, Faith Life Kids. So we're here again. We've been learning about enlarging our heart. You guys remember that? Now, first off, that sounds a little weird. Why would I want to enlarge my heart? Well, do you know what the Bible talks about that? It says that we need to enlarge our heart so we can receive the love that Jesus as the Christ had for us. And when we are full of the love of God, we can share it with other people. So I have a verse for you. We're going to start with that. Now put your listening ears on, and then I'll explain what it means. So 2 Corinthians 6, 11 and 13 says, Oh, you Corinthians, this is Paul talking, Our mouth is open unto you, our heart is enlarged. You are not straightened in us, but you are straightened in your own bowels. Now, for a recompense in the same, I speak as unto my children, be ye also enlarged. Now, I know what you're thinking, because I thought it too. Miss Cassie, what does that mean? Well, Paul was talking to his, the people that he ministered to, and he said, our hearts are open. We're ready to share the love of God with you, but you're not ready to receive it, and so it's not getting in. So open up your heart so you can receive the word that, of God. It's coming through for us, for you. So that's what we're talking about. Why do we want to do that? How do we do that? Well, we've been learning about how to do that, but we also have to be aware that there's something that wants to stop that from happening. There's somebody that doesn't want that heart to enlarge. He doesn't want you to share the love of God with other people. You know who he is? Yeah, he's the bad guy. So, the devil. So he has a plan, and he's one of his favorite things to use is fear. He wants to take, bring in fear and choke out all of the other things so that your heart can't expand, so that you can't share that love with other people. So, we have to know, how do we get rid of fear? How do we keep it from coming in? Does anybody know how we, does anybody remember? What is the big thing that defeats fear? That's right, it's faith. Faith defeats fear. So how do we fill up our faith on the inside to make that heart enlarge and keep fear out? Do you remember how faith comes? Oh yeah, Faith Life kids know how faith comes. We learned about it in Romans. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So when you put the Word of God in, your faith grows and it expands and then there's no room for fear. So we've got a really cool illustration we're gonna show you here about something else that can drive out. What else is in there? So are you ready? Here we go. We're gonna, first of all, make a mess because making a mess is always more fun. Just make sure it's a contained mess. So first thing, we've got, we've got some yeast in here. Now, can you guys see we've got 
the red. We want to make sure you can see what's going on. Okay, so got to give it a minute. We got some warm water here because yeast doesn't do anything unless it's activated. So just like you got to activate your faith, you got to activate the yeast. So remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So what might be a situation that you have that you need to build your faith? Well, maybe some symptoms are trying to come, or maybe it's fear that you're never going to pass the test. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says we're quick, sharp, and bright. So we want to make sure that we're building up our faith in the area that that fear is trying to attack us in, and then we're ready to see what happens. Are you ready? Okay, try to do this really quick so it all happens at the same time. Oh boy, it's already happening! Woo! Did you guys see that? That is so cool. So just like this, it pushing out, it's pushing out everything that was in that bottle. When we fill up our heart with faith, it pushes fear right out and there's no room for fear. Look, I couldn't put something in there right now if I wanted to, because there's no room for it. So now I want you guys to remember this. The next time fear tries to come in, we're not gonna let fear in. We're gonna fill that faith. See you later. My, my, my. What a great example from one of our teachers about what happens when our hearts are filled with faith. A great example indeed. And that is exactly what we want here at Faith Flight School. We want the kids to get so full of faith that they take off in their faith and they go out and they're doers of God's word. Faith is exciting. So exciting. And when we get filled with that faith, it will come out our mouth and affect everyone around us. That's right. Okay, so this is the sub room? This is the submarine room. Okay. Where many kids will learn about the deep things of God. Some confessions. Some confessions. Boy, I like doing my confessions. You I'll, like doing confessions? I like doing my, my, my confession, Marcus. All right, all right. Well, let's do let's it. Do. Ready? I'm quick. I'm sharp. I'm bright. Good I'm good looking. looking. I'm very, very rich. And a major blessing. blessing. Ooh, you want to take point on this next yes, one? Yes, sir, I do. All right, all get right, your doer. Show us the way. You go, I'm a doer. I'm a doer, I'm a doer of the Word of God. Now, we just gotta grab our handy Bibles here, Marcus. Yeah, but don't forget the other confession. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. That's true, yes you are. All right, what do we do with these? Well, you take your Bible and you say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. It is the Word of God. It is the Word of God. I am what God says I am. I am what God says I am. I can do what God says I can do. I can do what God says I can and do. And I can be what God says I, I can, can be. I can be what God says I can be. Woo! Yes, sir. Those are good confessions. I reckon so, Marcus. Hey, Lucy. How are you today? Oh, hi, Captain Tyler. I'm doing good. I was just checking on the acorn you gave me to plant. Oh, mind if I take a look? Of course. Wow, looks like you got some good soil in there and yeah, that acorn's definitely on its way to becoming a large oak tree. Yes, and my heart is on its way to enlarging and receiving the fullness of God. That's so good, Lucy. I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, but even though I'm excited in my heart, I still feel a little scared too. Hmm. Do you remember the story of Joshua and Caleb? Yeah. Well, do you think that Joshua and Caleb and those 10 other spies were excited about receiving the promises of God? Well, yes, I think so. Oh yes, they were all very excited about the land. But when they went in to spy it out, they saw some things that brought some fear. They saw walled cities and giants. The 10 spies, they didn't choose to resist the fear. They chose to give in and they doubted that God could actually take them in. 
But Joshua and Caleb, they enlarged their hearts. They trusted God that he was able to do what he said he would. And they got to enjoy the promised land. Well, oh, well, yeah, yeah, I can see that. I can resist these feelings of being scared and choose to believe what God says instead of being scared. Yes, exactly. And every time you believe what God says, you enlarge on the inside. One day, you can be as big as an oak tree on the inside and receive the fullness of God. Whoa, that's pretty big. Well, thanks for the encouragement, Captain Tyler. Anytime. I'll see you later. Okay. My workout shorts, oh! I was stretching in excellence, doing a lounge, and they tore. I tore my pants. They tore? But I had my church khakis and I just rolled them up and they worked just the same. Oh, well that sounds uh, like a very unfaithful pair of shorts if you ask me. I'll just get myself a new pair. Uh, oh. Hey guys. Woo. Oh, hi there, how are you doing? Howdy. Doing well, Captain Tyler. Captain Tyler, I'm Muscle Man. Muscle Man, nice to meet you. Speed, Speed nice to meet you. What, uh, what you guys doing today? Oh, stretching. having a bit of a stretch oh, there, yeah. Captain Tyler. Oh yeah, yeah. touching my toes. Can I, uh, you mind if I join you? Absolutely. Yeah. You can join us. Hop on right. in here and do a little stretching. Do it like this. You gotta, you gotta oh, do wow. the old, the reach behind. Oh, yeah. How are you doing that? A quick little bit of oh. Oh. Wow. a little bit of a. Oh. Is it normal for my back to pop? Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh okay. Yep. It means you're a little oh. tight and it's just loosening up. Hey. Good stretch when you're working out. Keep your muscles loose so you don't hurt yourself. Uh, you know, this kind of reminds me about stretching on the inside. That sounds painful. Yeah, sounds to me like you had too much pumpkin pie for Thanksgiving and your stomach is stretching out too far. Well, that's not really what I mean. What I mean is like, when you keep your heart open to God, yeah, and you're being obedient to him, he'll fill you up with his fullness. And if you ask me, that's some serious flexibility. It sure is. The fullness of God is a very large thing to contain. You better be pretty flexible for that. And so you're saying that if I keep my heart open to God, that I can be flexible on the inside. That's what you're saying? Well, it's actually not me saying it. No, you just said it! You well, just said it! Yeah, but it came from Ephesians 3.19 that says we can be filled with the fullness of God. Whoa! Oh. Wow, it sounds to me like staying flexible is a very important thing to do on the inside. I think we should do that! Oh, wow. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, just oh. a deep lunge. Ooh. Feel the burn! Yep, feel it for you! Oh. Ooh. Uh. Yeah! I can't even touch my toe! Hey, hey. <laughs> well, hey there, boys and girls. It's your old buddy, Jimmy Jazz Hey, <laughs> I know you remember. <laughs> so I'm here with my good friend, Cammy. Hey, Cammy, what are we doing here today? Well, today, we are going to be making a very special snack. Yay, I love snacks! <laughs> You're saying one of Jimmy's favorite words. You know I like me a little snacky snack. What do we got? What it's we gonna got? be so good. There's one for you one and for one me. for me. And today we're going to be making grasshoppers. <sighs> grasshoppers. Isn't that great? Yeah, grasshoppers. You know, I uh, I just remembered uh, I, I had uh, plans for tonight. Uh, plans what? to uh, eat something that's not a bug. So uh, you go ahead. You have your you grasshoppers. Silly, and, and, uh, silly thing. Maybe it's I'll not, head to the restaurant down the street. It's not real grasshoppers, Jimmy Jazz. It's it's chocolate and yumminess and pretzels and icing and good things that we're gonna make look like a grasshopper. Duh. Oh, just like shaped like a grasshopper. Exactly. <laughs> you got Jimmy nervous there for a minute. You know, Cammy, sometimes you say things that. Well, anyway, <laughs> you know, I I think uh, I think we can work with the delicious cakey grasshopper things, but. Um... Yeah. Well, we're gonna make them because we've been learning about Joshua and Caleb. You know, I was wondering <laughs> why, but you mean like the spies? Yes. 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 You. They thought they was grasshoppers. Yes, but you know what? 
They weren't. No. They did not believe God when God told them that they could take the land. That is right, Cammie. They chose to close their hearts to what God told them, and they yielded to fear. You know what yielding to fear does, Cammie? What? Yielding to fear restricts your heart. It squeezes it down all tight and closed, so you can't receive the fullness of God. <laughs> like when your that. hearts are full of fear, it just can't get in. Oh, oh my We have goodness. to choose to fill our hearts with faith. Believe in what God tells us in his word. And when we do, our hearts enlarge. <laughs> and we can receive all the fullness of what God has for us. Amen. Oh, that's so good. That's just what Joshua and Caleb did. <laughs> well, that's right. They enlarged their hearts by trusting in God. They had a heart full of faith. And you know what? They entered into that promised land. <laughs> they received all that God had for them. Yes, now, that's so exciting. So... Can we make the snack now? Well, speaking of what God has for us, <laughs> I'm ready for some chocolatey goodness. The first thing you're gonna do is get out the chocolate cakes. Oh, <laughs> get out the chocolate cakes, you're right. I'm very excited, chocolate is my favorite. Chocolate is your favorite? Yeah, what's your favorite? Oh, <laughs> well, chocolate's up there, let me tell you. Okay, so we've got that. Then we're gonna take some chocolate frosting. Chocolate frosting? <laughs> yes. And Are you trying to butter me up? <laughs> We're gonna put it on the front of the cake. That's probably too much, but it's okay. I like chocolate. Too much frosting? <laughs> you never have too much frosting. Not a thing. It's not a real thing, boys and girls. Okay, and then we're gonna put the eyeballs. The eyeballs? grasshopper eyeballs. They're just candy ones. Oh, they're candy, all right. They're edible ones on the front of the cake there. Do you like it? Uh, I oh, like it It looks it like you. <laughs> Them's just candy, right? Yes, they're just right. candy eyeballs, just candy not eyeballs, real ones. Boy. And then you can put chocolate frosting on the sides chocolate of your frosting. grasshopper mm -hmm. so that we can attach the pretzel legs. So you can put them in a little crisscross like that on this side. Oh, I see it now. And... That kind of looks like a grasshopper. On this side. That looks like a delicious grasshopper if you ask me. Okay, <laughs> let me put the legs on yours. And then mm -hmm. we'll be done. Your Jimmy's cake is ready. kind of falling apart. It's still going to taste good, though. Well, boys and girls, we're about to have ourselves some grasshopper chocolatey cakes. I hope you enjoy the rest of the class. Bye, boys and girls. Woo! Boys and girls, I'm back. It's me, Muscle Man. I've been pumping iron. I've been lifting iron. And I've been taking my iron because it's very important for your health. Now, boys and girls. I have here two piles of blocks that we are going to stack up, but I need some contestants. Can I get some contestants over here? Ah, oh, here we go. Right here, muscle man. Yes. I'll be a contestant. All right, boys and girls, I have here Captain Tyler and a Tom Teller. Tom Teller. As you can see, he's wearing a blindfold. Quite restricted. He's quite restricted. Now, Captain Tyler, Tom Teller, I need you to stack these blocks up into a tower as high as you can make it. Okay. Yes, and the, and the blocks are still over here. Right? Th yeah, there you go. Yeah, so when I say go, I want you to start stacking the blocks as high as you can make them. Are you ready? Ready. Ready. Okay, on your marks. Get set, go. Wow. Look at the look at the skill on this one. Look at how well he's played. Oh, but but look at oh Tom. Tom, no, 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 Tom, they keep falling back over. I'm doing the best that I know how. You you're doing great for for what you're doing, but no, 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 no. Oh, uh oh. No, no, that's not what no. That was close. You, you gotta stack them up. No, now they're falling on the floor. How high are they now? They're not they're getting there. Okay. And then, okay, well. Tom, why don't you just try again? Maybe a little slower. Okay. Captain Tyler, I think you're about there. How high is it? It's at least one block high, Tom. That's not very good. Nope, okay, let's, okay, we're there. Captain Tyler, I think, has won this one. What do you think, boys and girls? I think he definitely won. He definitely won. Now, boys and girls, this is a beautiful example of Fear restricting you. Did you see how he couldn't do the job he had? The fear had blinded him, you might say. 
And then over here, we have a beautiful example of a faith-filled heart, a heart that is open, ready to receive all the fullness of God. And he was able to build a lovely tower. Boys and girls, let's learn from this. Let's have our hearts open so that we can receive the fullness of God, not full of fear, where it restricts us and keeps us from the fullness of God. Hello, Bay 5 kids. We are so excited about Faith Flight School. In fact, sometimes when I get so excited, it just makes me want to sing about how big God is, because he is a good big God. So why don't you stand on up and sing with us? And you can do the motions too. Just follow along as you learn, okay? My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his and he worked too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do for you. Whoa, boys and girls, I'm Muscle Man and I'm still excited. You knew that. I have here Tom Teller. Tom Teller. And a Captain Tyler. Captain Tyler. And they have in their hands some balloons. You know what I'm gonna have them do? I think we should have them blow up those balloons and do it in a set amount of time and see who wins. Whoever can get their balloon the biggest wins. All right, are you ready? Yeah, right, let's go. I live ready. He does. On your marks. Now get set. Go! Look at how they blow up their balloons. Look how big they're getting. Boys and girls, you remember that Joshua and Caleb believed God and their hearts were open to, the, to, to God and it the fullness that he had for them. And they were able to receive it. This is a beautiful picture of that very thing happening. The goodness of God is feeling their heart because their heart is flexible. Boys and girls, I think you should go out and enlarge your heart so that you can have the fullness of God in your life. Great idea, muscle man. Excellent idea. All right, guys. So all day today, we've been talking about enlarging our heart and filling it up with the love of God so we can share it with other people. But the first step, and we don't want to skip that step, is you have to open up your heart to God first. So he can fill it up with the love of God, his love and, and all the things that Jesus did for us so that we can share with other people. So if you've never done that, the best day to do that is right now. You're never too young to tell, Jesus, tell the Lord, I want to serve you and I accept the gift of Jesus. Now, you know what the gift of Jesus was? When God sent Jesus to die on the cross, he paid for all your sins so that your heart can be made clean and new and then you can walk with him for the rest of your life and serve him. So if you've never done that before, today's the day to do it. So you're going to say it after me. Father God, I receive the gift of Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross, that he paid for the full price so that my heart can be made clean. I received that gift and open my heart to you and ask you to come in and make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. And so he does. Every time you talk to God, he will respond. So when you opened up your heart to him, now he can fill it up with his love and then you can share it with other people. Hey there, boys and girls. Did you have as much fun as I did today? Of course you did. Today we learned about Joshua and Caleb and how they resisted fear and doubt and they opened themselves up. They enlarged their hearts by being doers of what God told them to do. They believed Him and they went into the promised land. We can do the same thing. If we'll obey God and we'll follow His direction, 
our hearts will enlarge. And when he tells us to do something, we'll be able to do it. We won't be restricted and fearful. We'll have a faith-filled heart. We'll drive out all the fear, like that elephant toothpaste. Do you remember seeing that? When it just bubbled over? There was no room in there for fear, right? Right. Or how about like when Mr. Tom Teller tried to build a tower blindfolded? That was silly, right? He was restricted and it made it hard. But when I built one without a blindfold, it was easy. I knew right where to stack the blocks and it stood tall and strong, right? Yes, we can have a faith-filled heart. We can obey God by focusing on what he's told us to do. It'll push out all that fear and doubt and make it easy. So I encourage you this week, go out and be a doer of what God has told you to do and your faith will take flight. All right, I'll see you next time.